All right, iOS 17 has finally been released. And for today's video, I've assembled some of my favorite tips, tricks, and hidden features. And I think by the end of this video, you'll learn at least something new and be able to impress your friends and family with some of these neat features. But I don't wanna waste any of your time. So let's jump into it. For new users for iOS 17, the first thing you need to check out is how to customize your contact posters. Now, when you first install iOS 17, you should see this pop up right away. And if you dismissed it or want to change your contact poster after that, what you need to do is you need to go into the contacts app and then on the top, you'll see this new section labeled my card. Tap that and then tap contact photo and poster where you can find the customization page. Now you have a few settings here for your contact poster and you can set it with an image, a emoji, or just a monogram. Personally, I think this feature looks best with a photo and when you tap this option, you'll get a list of recommended photos. Once you select the photo, you can then customize the exact way you want your poster to look. That includes pinching to crop, sliding through different backgrounds and filters, and even changing the font and color of how your name appears. Definitely play around with this and get something you like because this is going to show up on your screen whenever you call someone if you choose to share it with them. Now, with that new contact poster, you'll also want to utilize one of the coolest new iOS 17 features called Name Drop. For Name Drop, you can actually share your contact information in a super easy way. All you have to do is just bring two iPhones close together like this, and then you will see this really cool animation play out. And then bam, you just shared your contact information and you also received the other phone's contact information. Now, another cool trick with that same gesture is you can airdrop. So you can airdrop something like a photo, a video file, or something else. Let's do that with a photo. So go to photos, find a photo you want, hit the share sheet and just bring the iPhones close to each other. And then you can see this great animation play out again. And that's it. Now you have successfully transferred a photo over to the other iPhone. This feature is really cool. Just make sure that both phones are running iOS 17 before you attempt this or else it's not gonna work. So make sure you share this video with your friends and family so they know how to do it too. Now, have you ever used widgets in iOS and found that they weren't handy because they only displayed information and you couldn't interact with that information? Well, in that case, you need to give widgets another try because in iOS 17, widgets are now fully interactive. So let's do this by adding a widget and you can see now that the widgets have been updated with an interactive part. So example, if you wanna play a podcast, instead of launching the podcast app, all you have to do is tap on the play widget and the podcast will automatically start playing. No need to launch the app and select it there. Another example is with reminders. So here's a list of to-do items I have in my reminders. And now when I finish them, I can just tap this circle and you'll see it checks off each reminder that I completed. Now with so much more customization in iOS 17, especially with widgets, you're probably rearranging the apps and the widgets on your home screen more than ever before. But have you ever moved a widget or an app and then the whole home screen got messed up and you're like, oh, I didn't mean to move it there and now you're screen is just completely disorganized and you have to spend time moving everything back to where it was. Well, thankfully in iOS 17, there's now a shake to undo after you move an app or widget. Now I know you're wondering, Greg, where did you get that cool wallpaper from? I need it for my iPhone right now. Well, this isn't a tip, but it is a shameless self-promotion for my new Waves Wallpaper Pack partnership with LD Vova over on Twitter. It features six stunning wallpapers in these amazing colors that look great on your iPhone or any phone for that matter. If you wanna support the channel and download it, check out the link in the description. And as always, thank you all so much for all of your support. It truly means the world to me. And honestly, these wallpapers are just fire. Go ahead and support the channel. All right, have you ever had a problem taking a straight photo on your iPhone? I know I have this problem all the time when I'm holding up my phone and I'm not sure exactly when it's perfectly aligned. So if you're like me, this is a new trick for you. And that is to add the camera leveler to your iPhone. To do this, go to settings, scroll down to camera, and in camera settings, you'll see a new option for a level. Turn this on, and when you open your camera, as you go to take a picture, if the iPhone isn't level, you'll see this new level bar, and then you can tilt the phone to adjust the level until it's straight. Speaking of new camera tricks, I know a lot of us spend time cropping photos, but there's now a faster and more intuitive way to do this in iOS 17, where you just pinch to crop. To do this, find a photo you want to crop and then just pinch into zoom to where you want it cropped. And then in the top right of the photo, you'll see a new crop button appear. Just tap that button and it will bring you to the photo editor. Hit done and you can now quickly fast crop photos. 
Also, while you're in photos, you need to check out this really cool trick that can turn any photo into an iMessage sticker. To do this, find a photo you want to make a sticker, preferably one with an easily identifiable subject, long press on the subject you want to make a sticker, and once you see this animation play out, release your finger, and then you'll see a new option called Add Sticker. Tap that and it will automatically add the image cutout to your iMessage stickers. From here, you can even long press on the stickers to edit how they look with a preset effect. When you want to use these stickers, just go into Messages, click on the plus sign in the bottom left, and then you'll see a list of apps, and then just select Stickers. Then you can either tap the sticker or just drag and drop them into your messages. Now for this next one, I'm sure many of you already know you can long press on an app to bring up additional shortcuts or press on messages to surface more options. This is a feature called Haptic Touch and it's been in iOS for a while. However, I feel like the default option just takes way too long, but in iOS 17, there's now a way to activate fast haptic touch. To do this, go to settings, scroll down to accessibility, tap touch, and then select haptic touch. And now you'll see the new fast setting for haptic touch that makes this process even faster. And just look at the difference it makes in the touch duration test. If you're a frequent haptic touch user, this is going to save you a lot of time. Okay, this next trick is really cool and one of the highlights of iOS 17, and that is to turn your iPhone into an alarm clock or a smart display. And it's really simple to do. All you have to do is charge your iPhone on the side horizontally. You can do this with either a MagSafe charging stand, which is the best experience, but you can also still use this feature with a cable as long as the phone is propped up on its side. Once you do this, your iPhone will now switch to this new standby view where you can see the clock on one side and then the calendar on the other. But if you don't like this view, don't worry, you can customize it a few ways. Just start scrolling on either side to reveal more options like additional clocks, weather, calendar views, and reminders. You can also swipe from the side to get even more display options like a full screen display for your photos, which looks really nice. And then you can swipe one more time to reveal full screen clock faces as well, and then swipe up and down for a few different clock face options. And if you have media playing, you can tap into this view as well. So you have a media player for your music, and you can even see notifications come through on this new standby mode feature. It's a really cool feature in iOS 17, and it's really smart considering so many of us have already replaced our alarm clocks with our phones. So now your phone can kind of go back and act as a dedicated alarm clock. I love it. Now, I don't know about you, but I am always losing my iPhone, which is why I love the ping feature found on the Apple Watch. However, there are a few times where I've actually misplaced my watch and thought, well, why can't I ping my Apple Watch from my iPhone? Well, thankfully in iOS 17, you can. To do this, go to settings, scroll down to control center, and then from the more controls list, tap the plus button to add ping my watch to your iPhone's control center. Then if you misplace your watch, just swipe from the top right of your iPhone's display and you can now see the ping Apple Watch icon. Just tap that and you'll hear this sound play out on your Apple Watch. Finally, it's not often I need to use this feature, but when I do, it's a time saver instead of spending 10 minutes hunting it down. All right, this next tip is for Siri users out there because there is a faster way to activate Siri. Now all you have to do is just say Siri instead of Hey Siri when using the voice assistant. This is a way more natural way to talk to the voice assistant and takes less time to say requests. You can also now follow through on requests too. So for example, you can say, Siri, what's the weather? It's currently cloudy and 71 degrees. How about tomorrow? Looks like rain tomorrow. So now you no longer have to invoke the Siri command multiple times. If the shorter Siri catchphrase isn't working for you, make sure it's enabled by going to settings, scroll down to Siri and search, and then tap listen for, and then set the command to Siri or Hey Siri. If you find that command accidentally activating Siri too much, you can still just set it to Hey Siri as well. While we're on the topic of Siri, I love using Siri to set timers, but there's a new trick in iOS 17 where you can now set multiple timers. To do this through Siri, just ask Siri to set a timer and then ask her to set another one. Then when you go into your timers, you can see there's now actually two active timers. Now while multiple timers is great, you may also want to keep track of what that exact timer is. Thankfully in iOS 17, you can now name timers. So to do this in the app, when you're setting a timer, just tap label and then type in whatever you want to name the timer. Furthermore, you can do this through Siri as well. So if you want to set a timer for, let's say you're making salmon in the oven, just say, Siri, set a 15 minute timer for salmon. 15 minute salmon timer, counting down. 
All right, are you an Apple Maps lover? Listen, there's no shame to it. I love Apple Maps and it's the mapping service I personally use. And in iOS 17, it has a new trick that is really handy because you now have the ability to download offline mapping information. And it's really easy to do. To do this, just go to the Apple Maps app and then tap on your profile picture in the bottom right corner and you'll see a list pop up with the new offline maps feature. Tap that and then you'll get suggested maps as well as the ability to download a new map. Tap on download new map and you can search for the area where you want to download an offline map. And then you can adjust the size of how big you want the area for the offline map. This is a really helpful feature, not only for when you're traveling in your home area to make sure you have constant access to maps without needing a cellular network, but it's also great for pre-planning trips where cellular service may be spotty or when you have limited cellular access, like when you're traveling to a different country. All right, next, let me show you an awesome feature for Safari for private browsing tabs to further increase your privacy. And that is to only show your private tabs after Face ID has scanned your face. It's an extra layer of security, which is great when you lend your phone to someone else. Enable this, go to settings, scroll down to Safari, and then scroll down to privacy and security. Here you'll see a new option called require face ID when unlocking private browsing tab. Enable that, and then when you go back to Safari and access your private tabs, you'll see that it now requires a successful face ID scan to unlock. I love this extra layer of privacy for sensitive information, and now no one will know that I listen to K-pop. Uh, 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 cut this part out, cut this part out. All right, now what if I told you that iOS 17 has actually upgraded one of the best iOS features of all time? You'd call me crazy, right? But I'm not, I'm sane as a fox, because for years we have enjoyed the easy use of two-factor verification on our phones, and then being able to automatically fill those in when we receive a text message. However, have you ever had some service send that code to your email instead? Well, it wouldn't autofill, but now in iOS 17, it can. So now when you get a two-factor verification code, either through SMS and now your email, you'll see it pop up right above your keyboard and all you have to do is tap it and it autofills. It is awesome. I'm so glad they're now doing this through email. Now, these codes are great time savers, but I literally have so many of these codes and they're taking up space in my messages and in my emails. Thankfully, in iOS 17, there's now a great trick where you can now delete these codes after using them automatically. To do this, go to settings, scroll down to passwords, tap that, then tap password options on the top. After that, you'll see a new setting for verification codes where you can clean them up automatically and have them deleted after using autofill. Just toggle that on and then the next time you get a verification code and autofill it, it will automatically delete it and no longer take up space in your messages and in your email. All right, but those are my 17 iOS 17 tips and tricks. And I hope you found this video helpful. And if it was, please like the video and please let me know what your favorite tip or trick was in the comments below. And if you think someone else might find this video helpful, make sure you share it to them. As always, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to see more and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.